Welcome to the next episode of Get to Know the Scientists here at Simulations Plus Hollywood Division. I'm joined today by Deshwan. Yep. Deshwan, welcome. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, I had a long history with the Simulations Plus. I joined the Simulations Plus in 2005, right after I got my PhD from the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. And, in uh, New York, so, very cold. Yes, very cold. Long <laughs> winter there. <laughs> yeah, uh, for, for my first session with Simulation Plus, I worked uh, majorly on ME Predictor. ME Predictor. Yeah, which is our flagship uh, chemical informatics software product. And uh, my responsibility was mainly on the modeling module, which was called ME Modeler at the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, which is uh, still a uh, very popular module uh, even now. Mm. And uh, in 2017, I rejoined the Simulations Plus, and this time I pretty much started working on the, our next generation of the Gastro Plus, which is called Gastro Plus X. Okay. Yeah, I'm mainly as uh, uh, one of the major developers in that project. So tell me a little bit about your 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 PhD, and then you move into Programming. Yep. Tell me a little bit about that transition. Sure. Uh, I have always been interested in doing uh, programming. And uh, uh, when I was doing my PhD degree, uh, I just chose a, a supervisor in the chemistry informatics side, which is a combination of uh, chemistry and the computer. Mm -hmm. So that means I don't have to give up my chemistry background and I also do something with computer. That's Absolutely. A, yeah, that's something I love. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, upon graduation, after joining Simulations Plus, I just started working on building the real software. That's something I'm really uh, proud of and uh, I love doing it. So in the Admi world, one of the things that has really come on lately is mm -hmm. something that they refer to as AI and machine learning. Yep. Tell me a, bit, a little bit about how that's influenced the development of AdMet Predictor? Sure. Um, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm pretty much the modeling guy and in the AdMet Predictor side. And uh, um, my background is kind of on the, uh, using all kinds of machine learning methods into the chemistry problem, like uh, predicting uh, properties just simply from the chemical structure. You gave me a structure, I predict a bunch of uh, properties that's related to the drug development or drug discovery. That's and a, where do you see it going? Do you see that the well, you know, what is the limiting factor right now mm -hmm. in terms of machine learning really being adopted by these kinds of uh, platforms? I think the major problem is the data, is the amount of data. That's uh, that's the limiting factor of uh, using machine learning or the artificial intelligence in general in solving chemistry problem. As long as you have a huge amount of data, I mean, it really doesn't matter which method you use. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, some methods may perform better, slightly better than other uh, methods for some data sets. But overall, I think the amount of data is a deciding factor. You mentioned that you moved from being a programmer that was primarily focused in on our AdMet platform to that of GPX. Can you tell me what that transition has been like and where your focus has been in the development of GPX? Yep, sure. Um, I mean, the transition is hard, mostly on the science side, but not the uh, programming side. I mean, on program side, there there, there were some uh, challenges, mm -hmm. but not as much as uh, challenges from the science side. My background is more on the chemi-informatics side, and uh, gastro plus is more on the simulation modeling. Right. And you have to have the pharmacology uh, knowledge and uh, the knowledge in the related fields. That's something I didn't have. But, you know, my attitude is that you give me this project, I have to do it and I just go there and learn everything. So you're one of those scientists that had been here a while. Yes. Then you left, had some experience outside, yep. and then came back. Yep. In that interim, how has Simulations Plus changed? 
I think Synergis Plus has uh, become stronger. And it, of course, it's larger. It acquired a couple of uh, um, other companies and uh, it grew to be a larger company. We have a bigger pool of uh, talent now. And I think that financially we're stronger too, mm -hmm. stronger too. And uh, I think that uh, make us in a very good position in the market. Uh, I, with uh, more resource, I think we can in innovate better. We can build a better product and uh, hopefully we have a better future. Yeah. You spent some time, I believe, in China yes. in the interim. Yep. Can, you, can you talk about what kinds of needs they need? That we might be able to serve? Uh, I think China will be a big market, potential big market, because there, there are so many uh, small, either small or medium or potentially large pharmaceutical companies. They're trying to uh, make novel drugs or the generic version of novel drugs. And I mean, considering the population of China, the market potential is huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. So one of the things that we are doing is growing. Uh, if you were to talk to somebody that might be just coming out of school, yep. why should you consider coming here? Even even for programming, maybe. Yep. Um, I think simulation, simulation Plus will be a good candidate for you know fresh graduates because we are a very solid company. We are doing real science and uh, uh, one of our goals is to build very solid software product which can be used by all the you know uh, scientists who work in the pharmaceutical fields. Mm -hmm.